So there are a couple of downsides of TensorFlow that I think are worth talking about too before we get too far into it. Um, so one fairly minor downside is that our graphs do have to be compiled before they can be run. This usually happens transparently to you. This is not a thing you have to worry about. The graph will be compiled, or the model will be compiled the first time you use it, but it does introduce a small constant overhead, right, on the scale of, I believe, seconds for most of the models that I've used. Not, not too bad, very minor downside, but worth noting, right? A constant, a constant overhead of a couple of seconds on top of all the advantages that it gives us is not so bad. So another slightly larger downside is the times that it doesn't optimize. So um, when it cannot reach in to CUDNN or ROCKM and find an optimized library, the code that it generates is going to be slow. In fact, I have heard, do not hold me to this strictly, that TensorFlow is commonly held to generate the slowest code of its competitors, for example, PyTorch, right? So when it cannot use the optimized CUDNN stuff and it has to generate its own code, its code is relatively slow relative to other like hardware and GPU accelerated deep learning frameworks. This is a slight headache for researchers because CUDNN is unlikely to already have an optimized version of a thing that you are inventing, right? So this is not so bad if you are a user, right? A practitioner, a person in industry who just wants to use these existing packaged fast network versions, right? If you are a researcher and you are creating new things, then the fact that TensorFlow code might be like relatively slow for you, right? Factor of two or three times maybe, slower than the optimized models, is kind of irritating, right? It's a problem. So another downside is the quote-unquote documentation. I think I can say Google does not always prioritize code quality or stability or API design or documentation. In particular, a friend of mine described the documentation of TensorFlow politely as a pile. Um, the fact that the documentation is bad becomes a problem because the API is not always straightforward, right? So I remember taking a very, very long time to figure out what TF cond for conditional, conditional, good lord, was supposed to take in TF1. It took a long time. The documentation did not clearly say. The help was not very helpful. Experimenting didn't work. It was a pain, right? wasting days trying to get this to work. To some people, I'm just confessing how stupid I am, right? But I kind of blame the fact that their documentation is bad and their API design is not clear. So this is also why you, woo, this is also why you pay me, right? Or why West Georgia is paying me to teach this class for you, right? Because trying to learn this, trying to cut your teeth on this bad documentation and not very clear API is unpleasant. I have already undergone some portion of that pain for you. So we talk, I just talked about this, right? But another downside is CUDA and ROCKM, right? Deploying to GPU is nice if you feel like dealing with CUDA and ROCKM, right? If you can't or don't, like if you, or if you can't or don't want to, not so much, right? So CUDA is NVIDIA only, ROCKM is AMD only, ROCKM is twitchy, right? Again, it's kernel panic. Twitchy. And it requires work, right? Keeping these things updated and in sync requires work. And they require specific hardware. If you are a company that can afford to hire a network administrator, uh, well, or a machine or, or a system administrator and make this that person's job this is not so big a deal if you are a research team and you guys or you maybe don't have those kind of skills right and you don't have people who want to be spending time on this it is a bigger problem again god knows the um 
So the server we use for CUDA in my work group does occasionally blow up and just stay down for days or weeks because nobody in our group, um, well, I guess one guy is, right? But there's one guy in our group who is particularly good at wrangling these libraries and, and Docker and everything else he has to do to get it to work. And any problems that occur just kind of have to wait for him. Yep, we know that. Okay. Oh, right. So again, just to repeat. So common instructions for requiring CUDA and ROCKM involve just enough hand fiddling with system libraries and or Docker that I don't want to deal with it for this class. If you want to take it on, more power to you. I will not. Okay. Oh, right. So why doesn't someone do an OpenCL or Vulkan backend? Because it's a lot of work right? And it's a lot of work that nobody's going to bother to do when CUDNN already exists, right? So bear in mind that you would have, so if you wanted to do an OpenCL or Vulkan backend, you'd have to get a bunch of OpenCL or Vulkan programmers who have a knowledge of neural networks and do optimized versions of those networks. If you work with GPUs a lot, you know that what is optimum on one card is not optimum on another, okay? So people would have to do a whole lot of intelligent hardware detection and fiddly tuning. That's going to take a long time and a lot of effort from people whose um, person hours are not cheap. And nobody wants to do that, right? If your choices are make that kind of investment or just buy NVIDIA hardware and use the existing CUDNN, everyone's going to choose that one. Right. And again, the industry has been relatively okay with just being like, all right, fine, we'll just buy NVIDIA hardware forever. Grumble, 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 grumble. Because I have an AMD card. So another downside is that TensorFlow might be absorbing and smothering other projects. If you're comfortable with TensorFlow, maybe you don't care, right? But it is worth noting. Keras used to be an independent project, right, that had a bunch of different backends, right? So Keras used to could use TensorFlow or I think PyTorch, right? Or oh, Theano, there it is. Theano. As of TensorFlow 2, that is no longer the case. As of TensorFlow 2, Keras is a TensorFlow component, and all the other backends are deprecated. If you're a TensorFlow user, maybe you don't care. If you are a PyTorch, right, or Theano user, maybe you are slightly annoyed. Or maybe not if you're a Theano user. Maybe you have other problems because Theano is dead. Theano was a competitor to TensorFlow. It was an older project that kind of did what TensorFlow does, right? In Python, you would build a graph and then it would deploy that graph to GPU. The creator of Theano specifically abandoned it, gave up on it because high quality industry solutions came to exist. And by that, he meant PyTorch and TensorFlow, right? So TensorFlow, I think it is fair to say, is absorbing or smothering some other projects that might have been also good or useful. All right, so there are our downsides. Next, let us look at some example code. 